Good morning and a very warm welcome to Advent Worship. We're in the second week of Advent and we gather together from many different places but we're one people as we worship God. So wherever you are watching and joining in our service from, I give you a very warm welcome indeed. My name's Mark Pengelly. I'm one of the ministers in the Chelmsford Methodist Circuit and I'm going to invite you to begin this circuit as we come into God's presence with this call to worship. The eternal God calls us here from different places and by different routes with different needs and with different hopes at different stages on our journey of life and faith. We all rejoice that we have come at God's invitation and in his strength and that in God we find our place and our calling on our life's journey. In this our second week in Advent we light our second Advent candle and I'm pleased to take you now to Trinity Methodist where young members of our church family there are lighting the candles. Each week the excitement builds and uh, hope you enjoy the excitement of lighting the candles as much as our young people do. After we've seen the lighting of our second candle we're going to hear the song and you can join in singing like a candle flame. Shining brightly as the sun, we are watching for the Lord, we believe and trust his word. Light the Advent candle one, shining brightly as the sun. Like the Advent candle two, John the Baptist brought good news, told us all, He's on his way. Help the world to change and pray. Like the Advent candle two, John the Baptist brought good news. Yet his light shall 
Spirit blazing as we touch the flame of His holy fire. God is with us. Thanks very much to all those who've worked hard uh, to make the videos of our lighting of the candle. We look forward to the exciting episode next week. Turning to our Bible readings now, um, we're going to hear from Isaiah and then from the beginning of Mark's Gospel, read by Sheridan and then Gillian. And our readings this week have a common phrase that resounds in them. A voice crying in the wilderness. And Isaiah the prophet very much felt like that at times as he spoke God's word, as I'm sure did John the Baptist, who is the focus of our gospel reading. Comfort. O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear, say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Mark chapter 1 verses 1 to 8. John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, 
the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you to our readers. See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Voice of one crying in the wilderness were the words of that that jumped out at me as I read them this Advent. A voice that cries out is one that needs to be heard. The baby cries. Babies cry out to be heard. Their needs to be met. Hungry, cold, wet, they must get your attention. The town crier cries out, oh yea, oh yea. The town crier needs your attention. Listen to what's being said. As I've reflected on those words, I'm mindful that there are voices crying out all the time. Perhaps as we're mindful of many voices crying out, the question for us this Advent is, which one gets our attention? Which voices crying out are we listening to? Which ones do we hear? People cry out in many ways, of course. They're not happy. Sometimes they cry out for you to notice. They need your attention. Do you hear them? People cry out in many ways. They have good news they want to share. They will cry out for you to notice, perhaps on a social media post or by the smile they reveal, or rather the crinkle of the eyes behind the mask these days. They cry out, they need your attention. Do you notice them? Do you hear them? People cry out in different ways. Isaiah was a voice crying out, a voice in the wilderness, a voice that needed the attention of those who had been desperate for some good news. People in exile, away from their home. People desperate for good news. Does that sound familiar? This week, as we've heard news of vaccines soon to be released. Chapter 40 of Isaiah brings a fresh part of this prophecy, where after years of exile, there's imminent hope of return to the land the people called home, the land the people longed for, and as well as that hope, hope of a new relationship, a restored relationship with God. People cry out in different ways. John the Baptist was another voice who needed to be heard. He wanted people's attention. So he dressed strange. He ate weird food. He also, like Isaiah, addressed the need of the people to have their relationships, one with the other, and with God restored. Like Isaiah, he offered hope of something better to come. He told of one who was to come, something soon, something in the future, one we call Jesus, one we anticipate in Advent. Voices crying out, 
wilderness voices trying to get our attention. Do we hear them? Do we listen to them? Let's be like those who listened to what Isaiah and John the Baptist had to say. Hope of good news. Something we're all crying out for. Something that God offers in Jesus through Advent and this Christmas. Amen. Ramona is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession now and after that another chance for us all uh, to enjoy music and singing together. If all this talk of voices crying out is seeming a bit much this Sunday morning, uh, we're going to worship as we be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. Loving God, we bring our prayers to you. Here in this moment, in this time and space, we come amid the noise of the crowd. We come amid the voices of those who would shout at us. We come with the voices of those gone before us who have declared your message of good news. Creator God, we bring to you all that we are and all that we are not, asking you to give us ears to hear what you would say to us, asking you to help us to truly listen to your voice, to be able to separate your voice from that of the crowd. We come in expectation, we come with hope filled in our hearts, knowing that you have gone ahead of us. You are the one who prepares the way for us. You are the one who makes us lie down in pastures of green. And so in this moment, in this time and space, we come. We come to you, God of the wind, God of the noise, God of the quiet, God of the messenger. Open up our hearts to you. Open up our ears to hear your word and give us hands that are willing to work with you and for you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come back before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with 
with splendor he has crowned how awesome is the size our radiant king of lights be still for the glory of the Lord is shining is moving in this place be still well i hope you enjoyed that our worship draws towards its close and Perhaps I should mention at this point we've got some exciting things to look forward to. Uh, a prophetic voice saying there's good things to come. We've got a carol service that we're planning for the 20th of December. Uh, Reality Church are going to bring us a Christmas Eve service. And on Christmas Day uh, we're going to have live streamed worship for those who aren't able to come out to our churches as well. For the carol service, uh, we've got some special things lined up. Members of Trinity Music and Drama are singing for us. And those re uh, recordings have just happened a couple of days ago. But also there's a chance for you all to join in singing. And that's as we have a Zoom sing-along. Heather, our student minister, has organized this. And if you'd like to join in, the Zoom sing-along, which is going to be recorded and used then as part of the carol service. Uh, look on the circuit website, uh, chelmsfordcircuit.org.uk, for information about how to join that Zoom meeting, listen to the music tracks to sing along to, and then you'll get recorded. We're hoping to have a really massive choir gathering together for the Zoom sing-along. And so it remains for me to say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.